Welcome to another edition of Llama Live. Surprisingly enough, we're going to Ballarat again. So we've pulled the camera out, we've mic'd up. Apologies for the wind noise today. It's the windiest day Victoria's had in many years. I think there's a ton of warnings out. So if you see a cow or a sheep or a kangaroo in the background fly past, situation normal. The trees are bending over. It's quite nasty. How you doing, Vaughn? I'm okay. I'm alert, but not alarmed. <laughs> as long as you're alive, that's the main thing. All good. Excellent. These, uh, these Llama Lives are just a general banter. If you haven't seen one before, we talk about all topics. Anything that pops up along the way, you can download these as MP3. I'll put a link below so you can do a conversion or just alt tab to a back the backgrounds and listen yeah. away. Or hit next for the next video that we'll put out on a smart trainer or some bike tech. So we're back from Perth this week. Back again to Melbourne. Perth was great. There was some nice weather over in Perth. It was a little rainy here and there, but we managed to dodge the rain. Von, you got a heap of K's in over there? Oh, it was amazing. I'd um, mapped out a few rides that I'd previously done in the years that I'd been to Perth and revisited those. Got a couple of personal bests, so feeling even stronger than I was back then. And um, yeah, cracked out a heap of K's. It was perfect. I think I got 450. Uh, that was kind of handy, but I, I kept, kept, kept clear of the hills. River loops for days. I like Perth river loops. As you saw with the video I uploaded the other day, it was an hour 40 or an hour 30 of just riding along with Slane on our last day. I thought, oh, who's going to watch this? And someone commented, who the hell's going to watch this? And then more people commented, I watched the whole thing. Thanks for this. <laughs> awesome. So that was good. Tour de France wrapped up last Sunday night. We saw Matthews take green. Oh, so good. And yeah, not, not ideal circumstances with Kittle being out, but it was good to see he was fighting for it and he was working hard for it. So it wasn't as if it wasn't deserved and you've got to be there till the end. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen them deck it out for that <laughs> those last 20 points that they had. Yeah. But yeah, it, it was so close. Yeah, yeah that was really good. Uh, for me on top step, nothing to get excited about over there, nah, I guess. He just, that was he just, a snooze fest. Yeah, he just ticked away, ticked away, got it done. Well, but, maybe that's a, a really good case for being consistently there. Yeah. You know, you have to be there, you have to be at the top, you have to be pushing those limits consistently to still make it to that top step, even though he didn't win a stage. Well, he's also got to be good at a TT as well. Yeah. So you've got to be skinny as hell, but you've also got to monster the power out in a TT, but get that technically right too. Yeah. So, yep, got it all done, ticked all the boxes and got about business. Yeah, so I've had a bit of Tour de France hangover because we did stay up watching them all. Um, the last one finished for us 3.30 a.m. Oh, yeah. And I didn't get to watch the presentations. I literally just zombied to bed straight after that. We watched the finished sprint <laughs> and we went, it's 3.30 a.m., it's time to sleep. We're not, we'll watch the highlights. And we watched Matthews get the green jersey, I think, of the highlights yeah. up on the podium. That was about it. Uh, again, the Lance podcast. Good banter. Yeah. I like it. Um, it's polarised people like nothing else. Um, but I... I yeah, it was what you, good. Like, I even enjoyed when, because uh, I'm a big fan of George Hincapie, yeah. uh, having him on the podcast as well and hearing his views. He's like so chillaxed about everything and then they're like trying to rev him they're, up to get Yeah, they opinion. were trying to rev <laughs> George up with about something. That was, that yeah. was cool, yeah. That was good. But in the comment section, just floating around the internet, people are very, very opinionated on the Lance podcast. So much so that even somebody said to me and somebody else who were saying, oh, it's a good podcast that we should be banned or something for even listening. Or It's like, look, that kind of pig-headedness, you know who that reminds me of? A Mr. Lance Armstrong back in the day. <laughs> Very interesting. I just thought, well, if you know, remember when Lance was that pig-headed? Sure, that's what he was. But nowadays he's changed. So hopefully these people give them about you know, five or six years of chilling out on the internet and realising that people may change and people have other ideas and opinions. That's yeah. cool. It's cool. Just it, chill. It was nice listening to it after each stage or even you know catching up to it yeah. throughout the race. So you got to hear their views and opinions. Uh, sometimes I did feel like I was uh, listening to Lance's therapy session about yeah. the Tour de France. But, you know, it was real from that perspective. He he took the piss out of himself yeah. as well. <laughs> and that was what was real about it. And you could tell, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it personally. Yeah. Last Sunday, Vaughn did the Rafa 100 women's ride here in Melbourne. I believe that's a worldwide thing now. So yeah, women yeah. all over the world riding that. We put up a video last week just introducing that and uh, the camera footage Vaughn got. Yeah, uh, look, I have to say thank you so much to all of the comments and uh, feedback that I've had for that. Like, it's been really, really great. Um, such a great response. So thank you. It's been good, and I like to be able to share something a little different on the channel as well, and not being uh, 
Yeah, being allowed to do that, I guess. Yeah. It's not just a, here's a new trainer, here's a bit of tech. It's about, here's somebody on a bike that we know, fun, riding around places that we know, which is Melbourne. If you don't know Melbourne, or hopefully you do now from watching a lot of my stuff, and a bit of Perth, some Adelaide, where else have we gone? Everywhere. Anyway, it's Everywhere. just good, I like that kind of content. And being it um, demand driven, you, you get to choose whether you hit that, hit next, watch the next video or not. Yeah. It's all good, I like that. Volta España, coming up soon. Oh, SBS yeah. in Australia have the coverage of that, we can't wait. Yes. I'm not sure of the commentary team, hopefully it's Kino. Uh, yeah, I think it's Kino and Robbie again. Okay, sorry, I just had to pop my ears then because we're actually, uh, we're in Pentland Hills. Ballarat's about 350 metres above sea level. And Melbourne's, well, obviously at sea level. So we get a bit of ear poppage. This is your captain speaking. Boop, boop. Feels like we're at altitude at the moment with this wind. Yeah, so the Volta should be good. Uh, Froomey's confirmed starting. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Mr. Nibbles is coming out, I think, for the Giro, is he? Well, he should be, because Mr. Nibbles wasn't at the, uh, the tour. Yeah. Anyhow, it's all racing, it's all good. Whoever's in it, we even see that, yeah, if the top contender gets taken out or takes a dump, it's all something to talk about. <laughs> 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 okay, in a couple of weeks' time we have Eurobike coming up. I was lucky enough to be invited over to Eurobike last year on behalf of Zwift. Uh, that was really, really good experience. I felt like an outsider there last year because I was just sort of walking around. I felt like a consumer rather than somebody part of the industry or part of the media. I guess I now am part of the industry. You're in there. That's me. Like it all, lump it. You're neck deep in it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, but I still see myself. I'm just a cyclist from the outside looking in. So this year I have a method of getting over there. We have, I've been invited back. I've got to find out some accommodation though because the location of it, which I won't murder with my accent, let's give it a shot. Frederick Shaven, Fred, Fred no. Put, it, put it in text I'll, below. I'll put it, yeah, yeah, comment. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is below. <laughs> On the lake there in Germany, it's probably two hours out of Munich. Yeah. Um, I we just can't find anywhere to stay. It's nuts. Yeah. Well, I did find one place actually that had bedrooms for it. Nine and a half thousand dollars Australian. <laughs> okay, so looking for something reasonable. Yeah, so we'll see um, what happens. I've got a few. If anyone's got an Airbnb, secretly. Even, even yeah. Airbnbs are dodgy. Like, oh man, I've heard so many horror stories of Airbnb. For one person, it's not bad, or two, but for any more than one, anyhow. So we'll see. If, look, if it doesn't happen though for Eurobike, I'm, I'm not too stressed. Most of the content that I can make and the technologies that I make, I'm more comfortable doing it at home. And I'm in full control of that. Such as when uh, Tax had asked me to cover the new flux or my third flux at the Tax headquarters, and I'm like, no, 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 I won't be doing because that's not that's not the environment that I want to test something and potentially break something in. So I said, send it to me. I'm going to do full independent testing at home. I will try and break in my own environment, and that's what I did. Couldn't break it. The train is going well. Well, you rode it the other night yeah, too. Yeah, it's great. It's quieter than I thought. It really is. Yeah. Uh, the Dorito, Doretto, you've been riding that the last couple of days? Yeah. You like it? I do. It's got some good feedback. So Vaughn yeah. is in a privileged position of being a beta feedback -er <laughs> as well, just through her association with me. Just munching on some Doritos. Yeah. Uh, so some, um, I took it up the Epic Com last night because mm -hmm. I did the, the challenge um, up the Three Sisters. Yep. So where you do the three different peaks and um, yeah, I really enjoyed the resistance feedback going up the Epic Com because that is like edge case scenario. They're pushing the trainer response to the limit, mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I, I liked it. That was good. Cool, cool. Now we've just been overtaken here with a bike on the back that has two big disc brakes on it. Good segue to talking about disc brakes. My video I put up this week talking about the Cycling Australia decision for disc brakes. The motivation behind me putting that video up was just had a, a discussion on the, one of the cycling tips forums where somebody put up a comment to the news being announced with, oh, why is this good news? Who gives a shit? Blah, blah, blah. And they were pretty negative about it. So I had a, just a level-headed discussion about, no, well, here's the innovation. We're not taking anything away. It just gives people more chances to race. It was, a, it was a really good discussion. Uh, and a few other people chimed in. Whoever the pig-headed prick was who put up that, you know, arrogant post, deleted his post and subsequently deleted our discussion. So I thought, you know what, you, I'll use this as an opportunity on my channel to have the similar conversation that I thought was valuable to share. And I did. It was received very well. And to my surprise, it was shared out also by Cycling Australia. I've been very critical of Cycling Australia in the past, or anybody, and I feel it's an opinion piece. It's what we're allowed to do. 
I thought it was good that Cycling Australia could say, you know what, Cork, Shane's been critical of us in the past, but he's got something to say about one of our decisions here that he supports. Here's Shane's view on this. Okay. And shared it out to their subscribers. I like, yep. Thank you, Cycling Australia, for that. Um, I, as you've seen, if you've seen the video, it just makes sense. Um, there's so many reasons for it. Good choice. Yeah, well, I would definitely say it is a limiter for me upgrading my uh, bike at the moment. Well, you got, we're going to get a new set of wheels with a wider clincher rim to run 25s. Um, but now, if you had have done that, it would have been a poor purchase because your next frame will obviously have disc brakes. We do a lot of riding up and down hills during summer up in the high country. Anytime we can. <laughs> and we descend a lot. I've descended a lot. Well, if you see my Buffalo KOM descent video, uh, my video up in the Grampians of descending there and crashing. Uh, look, I've crashed with disc brakes anyway, so it's not going to stop me from crashing, but it's going to eliminate the overheating of the carbon wheels that we run if we're running carbon wheels, or even alloy. My twos and fours and pros and cons are all in that other video that I'll link to. Have a look at that one. But the, the feedback from that from everyone, I really, really appreciate it. So even the people who don't support the decision but respect the decision, that's the kind of discussion that I like to have. Um, even if anything in the channel, it's the same. If someone doesn't agree, but rather than attack the person, attack the idea and beat it with fact rather than fiction and emotion, good banter, good banter on the channel. That's what we like. So Vaughn, anything else to bring up this week? Um, oh, I'm looking for new challenges, I guess you could say, now that I've completed all my main cycling bits and pieces I had for winter, but winter's still here. <laughs> it is. We won't be getting up to the uh, Grand Fondo in Darwin this year. I don't think we so. We did it last year and it was brilliant. Oh, it's so good. But we just can't make that happen. The flights up there, are, uh, I think it's going to cost us about 1500 bucks for the both of us to get up there to ride 130k. Plus entry fee, plus accommodation, plus everything else. So, yeah, just didn't align this year. No. If it was at a business year. expense, we could do it. <laughs> We're working on it. Uh, speaking of which, um, I'm having a lot of conversations in the background, behind the scenes of the channel, that are going to really help out the content yeah. that I'm bringing to the channel, which has been good this week. So, speaking of the channel, we've hit over four million views. Wow. Twenty-seven thousand subscribers. But best of all. The platform's there to take off when good content comes along. So the Tax Magnum has had, you know, what, 120,000, 130,000 views for that video. Um, and a lot of my search-based content is just ticking along very, very nicely, such as how to upgrade firmware. And yesterday I did the through axle adapter kits for the Kicker Snap and the Kicker Direct Drive units. So if anyone's looking for those, not maybe not now, maybe not yesterday, in the future, it's all searchable content. Yeah. So it's up there. So when we get our disc brake bikes in the future, we'll know how to use them. For sure. So we'll leave it there for today. Thank you for coming along for the ride in the car with us, wherever you may be. And uh, thanks for coming, Vaughn. Thank you. I'll link below to our Instagrams, our Twitter accounts, and everything else, because there's, we put a few content posts up there as well, in between times, between Llama Lives, and posts up on YouTube. So follow us along for the journey. And uh, yeah, feel free to comment. Let us know where you are on yours on your bike as well. Thanks for watching.